Okay, we just came back in from visiting uh, Fort Mose 2, the site of Fort Mose 2. There's nothing on it right now, but um, uh, we, that is the site of it, of the, uh, of the second fort. The first fort is, uh, the site of the first fort was underwater. Uh, this talks about uh, on the shore of Robinson Creek, a quarter mile east of this marker, site of the Spanish mission for Indians, left homeless. Since 1688, slaves from the English found refuge. The king granted them citizenship and their freedom, or freedom and their citizenship, if they were within his realm. Uh, by in 1740, British attack St. Augustine um, highla uh, highlighted, <laughs> occupied this fort, uh, the first fort, demolished it. Uh, they later re-established uh, this fort and this colony on the site that we were just on, Fort Mose or Fort Mose too. Uh, these little kiosks, these informational signs lead up to the visitor center, which we're going to go see in a moment. And they explain the various uh, aspects of this site and the history of the people who came to this site. This shows... Uh, the various uh, slaves or Africans who slave, traded in slavery, uh, they delivered that product to the Europeans who then transported them across the ocean to the New World. It's called the Middle Passage because the, the transportation was the most difficult part. The, the, the Africans who captured the other Africans, they're, they're in tribal warfare or whatever it might have been, for whatever reason, they, they captured them, subjugated them, sold them into slavery uh, to the Europeans. And they, they call it the Middle Passage because that was on the ships. That took place on the ships, the English, Spanish, French, Dutch, whomever was a shipping power in that age who uh, traded in slaves. Once they got here, um, they were enslaved, but they were sold to, to, to the new owner and at a profit to the people who had originally taken them. I mean, it's just common uh, mercantilism. Everybody gets a cut Everybody gets a bump. They sell them for so much on the coast of Africa, then they sell them for more when they get over here, and more still when they're sold again. So, um, obviously, as a person ages, his or her value diminishes, and as they have diseases and infirmaries and, and injuries and things of that nature, their their value decreases. But during the, the earlier parts of their lives, they're considered very, very, very valuable commodities um, and this talks about uh, the escape of the slave from north of here in the Carolinas Georgia uh, whoever could get down here they would be granted their freedom by the English king if they converted Catholicism and of course you know, it wasn't hard to do when faced with the options. This talks about Fort Mose or Fort Mose 1. Uh, 1738, 100 runaways arrived in Carolina. The Spanish governor established Fort Mose and from Carolina, if I said in Carolina, I was wrong. So they, they, they got down here. The Spanish governor said, okay, there's 100 of you. We can integrate you into our society. Boom, have your own place. So he set aside Fort Mose, uh, the one, the first one, which is now, according to archaeologists, underwater. The uh, English allied with some lower creeks and uh, led by uh, Governor, Georgia Governor Oglethorpe, uh, moved into this area to attack and Run, drive out the Spanish presence uh, was unsuccessful in that regard, but was able to were able to um, destroy the fort, the original first Fort Mose or Fort Mose. Um, years later, ten or twelve years later, 
uh, some freedmen returned to this site and built and inhabited what is now called Fort Mose II. Uh, and that was where we were just at. That's where I uh, was able to get some photographs and, and take a video out there. We, we visited out there. That was pretty, pretty exciting. Um, and then that's where they live. And so then, 10 or 12 years later, 20 some years after the defeat and destruction of the original fort, uh, Spain gave Florida to England. So in doing that, without you know getting too much into all the different various legalities, boom, slavery is reinstituted. Every African that had been a slave or was descended of slavery, slaves, um, all of a sudden became a slave again. Or they got the hell out of Dodge. Um, I imagine a lot of them went to the islands um, and or South America, which is where we get all of our the, the black Spanish people today. Uh, the, the Spanish people who inhabited South America, Central America, um, and many of the islands were just you know, basically of European pigmentation. But as the blacks integrated into that society, the, you know, the black gene, the African gene uh, moved into that area. And now you have Hispanics of all sorts of colors, um, nationalities and, and pigmentation. Um, this is a represent, this is inside. This is very, very cool. This is a representation of further examination of that, that institution. Okay. Was living at Fort Mose really freedom? What is really freedom? Freedom from what? I mean, everybody has somebody they have to answer to. The English colonists were looking for greater control over their own uh, mercantile commercial interests. So they went to war with the, with the uh, the crown, I mean, English versus English. It was the American Rebellion, American Revolution, but it's also essentially a, you know, just an overthrow of the old into the new. They wanted more control over their commercialism. The video you are about to watch shows actual footage. This is a super cool, hey John. And this is a super cool representation here. Start at the beginning. Okay, this is a diorama of where we just were an hour ago. This is the second fort um, built in 1752. Um, so if you can imagine where we were versus this, it, w it was much, 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 much bigger than what we saw. And these walls would have been constructed of the coquina that we saw. Um, and of course, the whole thing was on top of the shell mail. This was an ancient uh, Tequesta Indian shell mound before it became Fort Mose. Well, here's the scale in feet. So each 50 feet, so there's 100. So it was much bigger than what we saw today much bigger, but crazy cool, obviously. And that's a neat representation of it. Okay, so here's some cool play guns for kids.
and again, this is what we talked about earlier, the Catholicism, if you got here, converted to Catholicism, doesn't matter who you were, you were in. And if I stand on one of these circles, I get to uh, activate this thing, and it tells me about these little uh, displays that we're seeing, but I'm not gonna do that, because I don't wanna stand there for that long. Again, we see that um, Indians, Africans, uh, English, Spanish, whoever got here, they could live here as long as they converted to Catholicism. So it was the first homogenous society and the true ideal of what America's meant to be. This talks about the militia. They were all soldiers. Um, protecting their own fort. This talks about the guy who uh, was the, the commander here for, for a time. He got sold back into slavery for whatever reason. He went up into North Carolina and got sold back into slavery. I don't know why he would have gone back up in North Carolina, but he did. Um, these are the militia guys again. That's the Spanish flag behind it. That's a replica of a gun. There is no such thing as a gun from that period that is that shiny. So it's impossible to be that shiny. All right, this is a really cool timeline. And as we all know, the Indians are Indian because that's what Columbus named them. Actually, just Aboriginal people of many, many, many different cultures. Um, several free Africans came to Florida with De Leon. I'm sure there was a lot of other free people that came with him, too. Um, this talks about Narvaez. As we know, Narvaez landed down the coast. This shows him going inside Tampa Bay, and he may or may not have, but he absolutely went on the outside. And this looks more like the Soto's track. The Soto landed here, so sailed up into here, and traversed the Hillsborough with the Coochie, Swanee, and all went all the way up into Alabama where he eventually died. Um, I don't see that represented here. Oh, here we're talking about DeSoto, Southeast, both free blacks, etc. cetera, counters, Indians. So yeah, we're not talking about uh, DeSoto here at all. We're just talking about Menendez. There's Fort Caroline. No one knows where the real Fort Caroline is. There's a replica out there, but the real Fort Caroline is lost to history at this moment. Who knows if it'll ever be found. Old school handcuffs, Jamestown. More of the middle passage we talked about earlier. There's the St. Mark Castle. Oh, here's the, uh, the destruction of the original Fort Mose. The rebuilding of the second one. There's Fort Frederica. I don't think we've been out there. I need to go out there. So that area that we were at today was also uh, inhabited during the revolution. So basically up until the late 18th century, this was inhabited and this was all 
behind it was all uh, agriculture land until Flagler came in and took all the dirt out. So that's it.